we're on to the needs assessment section. We had several questions this morning. This is part two, according to the FOA, for your project narrative. According to the FOA, the needs assessment section, says the se this section outlines the healthcare needs of the state. So in that, the reviewer, you're supposed to make sure that the reviewer understands the gaps in your state and also the current state of your EMS system. And as we discussed this morning, all of us are Category 3, I should say all of you. <laughs> and Category 3 applicants, it says, specifically include current needs of your pre-hospital and hospital health care system. So what does this mean? Translational, the section should be brief. It's just a brief status. It's an update, approximately one paragraph per performance measure. In this section, that's where you're going to set up those needs. That's why it's called needs assessment section, and those needs then will be um, explained more in the methodology and work plan, and we'll discuss those sections later. Also, you don't put the detail here. This is just really brief. The detail goes into your work plan. And we had talked about earlier this morning about other activities, and it's fine to have them. However, if you are going to have other activities, you need to show the need for those other activities in this section. So, as we showed you already we, in the introduction, we also did the same for this section, show you the basic breakout. So review criteria, this is under one need. Potential points, this is based on what um, need our thinks would be after reading the FOA, would be approximately five points. And recommended number of pages would be two to four pages long. Once again, that's up to you, that's just a basic idea to help you. And then there's actually attachments associated with this section. So attachment five is the summary progress report. And that should be a report that you write for this that's approximately, I think they said two to three pages long if I remember correctly, T. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you uploaded a 20 to 30 page um, progress report in EHB. You would get the information from that and essentially summarize it for your attachment five. Joe? Summarize, summar, what do you mean by summarize? Well, the attachment in the EHB is 20 to 30 pages long. So you got to yeah, pick out the main points and get it down to probably two to three pages long. Um, attachment eight, we had mentioned this earlier today. That was a letter that came out from HRSA um, to you in January, and that's the EMSC Performance Report 2011. So that actual letter is that specific attachment that you would have to have. And um, Janet had brought up, if you have C issues in that progress report, you should get those fixed prior to submitting your application. So you want to contact your person project officer concerning that. So people said, needs assessment, what is that? Is this a new thing I have to do? It just simply means the survey, your data collection for your performance measures. And most, if not everyone in here, use um, need our to host their performance measure surveys. So all it's talking about is your surveys you use. As an idea for an outline, we suggest that you take the 10 performance measures and set that up as your outline and write to those for the section. So what you put in yellow here is all you would include in that section for each of these things under I'm sorry. Um, um, this uh, Word document that you gave us and I'll get it into that at the, okay. at the end. <laughs> okay. Okay. So once again, and Patty had mentioned this, don't use the word survey. Use the word needs assessment. And you use this whether you're talking about your past data collection or your future data collection. So here's an example. In the past, you might have written, we conducted a survey with 140 hospitals with emergency departments in our state during 2010. You would just simply replace the word survey with needs assessment. Another thing to bring up is in the past, at least the last um, competing cycle, people, there were three performance measures people could consider optional and decide not to work on. However, that is not the case for this competing cycle. There is no such thing as optional. So therefore, all grantees will work on and or collect data for all performance measures. 
Lenora? That's an example of when you cut and paste, you might suddenly have the word optional because you cut and pasted from four years ago. There's no optional now. So those are some reasons to be very careful when you're cutting and pasting. Or if you copied from, okay, ones that were optional last time were force measure, it was either 74 or 75. General. Which was, that's 74. 74, 76, and 77. Right, so if you copy your sentence from um, from your last competing of those, and it might have said we are not working on that, and if you wrote that then into your new competing, because you just copied and pasted it, the reviewer's like, no, they have to work on this, and that for you to be docked there also. So you heard data collection, it says future, and it was brought up reassessment. That means when are you gonna uh, recollect on your performance measures? At this point, the plan is 2013-14 will be the next data collection for the current performance measures. And then the, after that, the next one will be 2016-2017, and that will also be for the current performance measures. So keep this in mind and write this into your, your plan for your, for your grant application. I'm sorry. Jim. So 2013 is the first year, the first year of the grant, the four-year grant. Um, so we should be saying that we're going to be resurveying that first year. My question new, to you: New needs assessment. Yes. New reassessing. Needs assessment. Reassessing. Mm -hmm. To a survey instrument. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, the, so I, I think I've heard that um, NEDARC is going to have people staggered, states staggered, as to when they're going to be doing their uh, needs assessment. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did ask for that. We talked about it at the advisory board as an option, but that's nothing to been said. So well, what, I, what I'm wondering is since we have a work plan and we're supposed to be saying when we're going to be doing things during that year, that first year, how will we know when to put that in for our work plan? As to when, what quarter, if you will, of the year that we'll be um, surveying or assessing our needs? Well, we probably, for sure, for the EMS measures, we won't start until probably May. But the, you should know the rollout date for your pediatric readiness. Yeah, we'll know that, yeah. But what Janet said. The other one, yeah, I know it starts in, in May sometime. So, so T, could they just say during the year, 2000, we'll, we'll use the need arc assigned time to blah, blah, blah? Yeah, and then your your timeline that you're talking about which part of the book in. Yeah. The whole thing. <laughs> I'm going to be working on it whenever I'm told. <laughs> so it's not like the third or fourth quarter. <laughs> yeah, and you know, there's the survey itself in which it's launched for those of you who had so much fun collecting data last time, but there's all that time up front also because you're collecting um, the list of who needs to be surveyed. But then after it's collected, then it's the cleaning and analyzing. So yeah, the, the yeah. needs assessment is a long, ongoing process. And, and have we been told, all of us, when we're going to be doing the pediatric readiness assessment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody should be emailed to that timeline. Do you, do you think we could get clarification from the um, that particular question, as well as the data collection or needs assessment? Uh, which, you said that particular question. Well, the P's readiness, because there's different phases. And I know you were in phase one, I think. We should have, we should have received an email in the last two weeks from your need RCA for us about, that has the date of your launch. I don't think that's... That only went out to everyone. No, we said, uh, no, we said what all of we said, and it kind of has the table of everything. Well, we'll send it again. Thank you. But we also talked about at the national meeting, if you guys split up into five groups at the national meeting, your cohorts, like I know Tony's the chair of cohort one. Okay, I have it pulled up. Who wants to know what? <laughs> okay, COVID has it pulled up. Who wants to know? Okay, I do. So group one, which consists of Arizona, CNMI, Hawaii, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, Florida, Rhode Island, Texas, Washington, West Virginia. It's October to December 2012. Group two, Colorado, 
um, D.C., Florida, Guam, Kentucky, Maryland, Michigan, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Utah, Virginia, January 13th through March 13th. Group 3, Alabama, Connecticut, Georgia, Indiana, Iowa, Massachusetts, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Virgin Islands, and Wyoming. Um, February to April 13th. Group 4 is Alaska, American Samoa, Arkansas, Idaho, Illinois, Missouri, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, South Dakota, Tennessee, Vermont. March 13th through May 13th. Group 5, Delaware, Kansas, Louisiana, Maine, Minnesota, New Hampshire, North Dakota. How come Janet gets to go last? <laughs> um, Ohio, Puerto Rico, South Carolina, Wisconsin. Um, they're actually April 2013 to June 13th. Where'd you find that today? Uh, in an email that Craig sent me. Okay. I do remember getting it. That's because I have like the most rockin'est, neat, artist-like person. Oh. And I got and mine from Andrea. And I got mine from Patty. <laughs> <laughs> and mine was probably as well. Rhonda has a question. So, um, just because part of um, my current work plan is to incorporate into our um, license, relicense of EMS ambulances, the needs assessment survey. Are those questions going to change a lot? Are they going to be the same as what we had the last time we did a needs assessment? They are not going to change, other than the yeah. fact that um, they have reviewed the equipment list, and that could change. And when will that be next? I, don't know. I talked to one of the chairs, and they hope by the end of this year. Yes. Uh, but they said mostly it will be removing pieces. Yeah. They don't believe they're adding anything. Boy, it'd be nice if they would do that for the end of the year. Well, you can email Beth and ask for clarification and ask her to talk to that group. I mean, Correction right, of, the, right. of the NPRP assessment, if that's going to yeah, an acronym. He's giving it an acronym. There's too many out there. I'm just repeating an acronym. It looks like we'll be able to add the hospital. Well, I can tell you this. That, so it will, uh, but we're waiting for a final verification of that. I can tell you this. If we do, if we roll this out in October, and then our assessment comes up in the middle of 2013, we're not going to reassess the hospital. No, right. So exactly. That's, we've been fighting for that. It looks like it looks like everything will be okay. ASAP just has to review the survey. Everybody but, else has approved it as far as I know. For the purposes of writing the grant, can we assume that we're going to use that data? Yes. So in the needs assessment section of your project narrative, you need to address all of the performance measures, even ones that have a 9% or greater state status. So, when applicable, you need to put in your response rate you got on your needs assessment, um, the numerator, denominator, and the state status. You're thinking, what is the state status? Well, that is taken from that letter that Curse has sent. It is simply the percent you get from dividing the numerator by the denominator. So, here's an example. I want to provide you with. Here's a needs assessment section that you can possibly write, and this one's for performance measure 77, which is the percentage of hospitals in the state slash territory that have written and facility transfer agreements that cover PS patients. So that's part of the outline, the fact that I listed the performance measure along with the definition of the measure, and then the preceding um, paragraph would be my addressment of that in the needs assessment section. In 2010, we did not conduct a needs assessment concerning the presence of interfacility transfer agreements at hospitals with emergency departments. However, during 2010, during the 2007 needs assessment, 53 or 54% of the 98 hospitals in the state had interfacility transfer agreements. For the 2013-14 grant year, we plan to conduct a needs assessment, or you could say a reassessment, with all 98 hospitals concerning interfacility transfer agreements. So here's another example, and this is for a non-data measure, and this one's for the um, recertification. So the state 
has a mandate that requires pediatric education for the renewal of VLS and ALS EMS provider certifications. The statewide mandate specifies a minimum of six hours of pediatric emergency education required for VLS provider certifications and 12 hours for ALS provider certifications. Once again, I have the C attachment A, they know where to go. And we plan to maintain the current required pediatric emergency education hours for EMS um, provider certification. This is one that's already been met, however, you're letting the reviewer know we're not, we're not done with it because remember you have to work on all measures, so you're saying that you're, you plan to maintain. <coughs> so you're showing that you're continuing to work on it in that capacity. So things to keep in mind, just like Lenora went over this morning and Patty, is you need to have an introductory paragraph to this section. At the end, then, after you've addressed each one of the measures, you also need to have uh, a write-up for the section that summarizes all that. So you synthesize everything you said. This is where you can really set up your needs for the methodology and work plan, and also set up challenges. But also remember, what I had said earlier, is if you have other activities, those also have to be included in that outline and you have to show a need for those other activities. So I have some work time for you now. When you were writing this section, what did you find? Or like problems you encountered when you were thinking about writing this or outlining it? Uh, some, of the, some of the stuff I'm cutting and pasting isn't really fitting in your life. <laughs> <laughs> So Rich said the stuff from the previous um, grant isn't really applying to this one, so the cutting and pasting doesn't work for this. But I was working with people in the back of the room and they were having some issues. Some issues, huh? People having issues? Yes. <laughs> what issues might those be? Yes. Debbie, are you okay? Debbie, are talking issues? about the main well, we Either Debbie, you were both having the same. We would have side problems, so yeah. Why not? Huh, Dan? Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> okay, share. Well, Sharon? Yes, please. <laughs> There's a Sharon in there. We want to commiserate. Share a button. Do we need to put on mute or something? Share a button. Yeah, we need to put on mute. It was just, it's hard for me to understand what the issues are. And if I'm trying to, because somebody's reading this, and I don't understand it, how they don't understand it. Then if I have like 426 agencies, but I'm only talking about 21 is my denominator, numerator, and 21 is my denominator, and I have 100%. That didn't make sense to me. Or a bit. So what Debbie was saying is, is um, especially this might not be as obvious to the newer managers, is when you did the data collection for the online medical direction, it only, that question, the questions about that only went to those who had accessed it or tried to get it in the last year. So those numerators, and I should say those denominators are going to be different than what you're going to have for 72. And then, um, so therefore it was confusing, like in her case she had 468 EMS agencies. And then she said she had 21 out of 21 for the BLS. Had it had the online medical direction, and then she used um, I, what was it for ALS? Your numerator, no. What? 35. 35. 21 plus 35 does not equal 400 and some. So she was confused about that, how to write it. So the examples I gave are just ideas, they're just basic ideas, but you're going to have to write it for your state, for your situation. So what you're so, saying is only the a small amount needed to contact that direction regarding the child. The rest correct. Report is needed to be to. Right. Is that the numerator based on those that responded to the survey? Correct. And that was part of the issue is it wasn't a true representation of what the EMS system looks like in the state. What do you mean, Lily? Yeah. So I have 78. EMS, uh, 78 um, CON holders in my state. All 78 are ALS and DLS providers. Uh -huh. um, but when I look at my performance measure um, 72 for my DLS numerator denominator, I'm running with the 27, not a full meter. And then um, same for my ALS. So I had 27 of my 78 actually respond. But that was not captured 
and the EHB. But it, uh, How come? so you would have to say, but that it would be by your response rate number. If well, you reported your response rate, it would be captured. What was your response rate? Should be in the gray box. Thirty-five percent. Okay. So if you so said thirty-five percent responded to the needs assessment, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's why um, the FOI specified having the response rate with the numerator and denominator, so they could truly see the picture. Because if you had a hundred percent response rate with those numbers, that's different than um, a lower response rate. So. Right, you're not capturing all of your state currently. Right. But that's and how you're surveying that. always is. Yeah. We're not surveying anymore. Right. <laughs> you, didn't, you, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't assess. I couldn't assess. Thank you. You did not assess all of your agencies. This is like saying the, like the A word. <laughs> I think we're saying if something's going to read your, your brand and they really aren't familiar, that you have to be clear that of those surveys, surveyed, this percentage that responded and then give your data. You have a photo, you have this many possible, this many uh, 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 answered the assessment, this many had it. So right. you, you really have a funnel. And on the other one, you have that additional funnel of this many contacted medical directions. Right, so 71 is a different than 72 because there, there was no gateway first. Yeah, right. Yeah. Another issue I saw come up is people were just uh, thinking of agencies, but then they got to Form sponsor 73, and they're writing as agencies. It's not agencies, it's patient care units. Patient care units is the terminology used in the implementation manual, but you also have to think about are you going to find that or are you just going to change that to ambulances for your state? But that's also on a different level than performance measure 71 and 72, which was on the agency level. So you got to remember to catch those things. So, who all used the outline provided for you? What were some of the aspects you liked about that outline? This part where you written. This part where you written. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Carol? It, it lists out the performance measures, so I don't have to keep going back and forth looking at the <laughs> It's just right there. So. Okay. If we didn't get a real good response, do we want to indicate that we'll attempt to get a better response next time? That's always good. Absolutely. Yeah. It was in my work run, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, that's, that's something that you could show and you could also talk about that. So when you say that you have that low response rate, that then is setting up your challenges. So you can resolve those challenges in, in a latter section called solution of challenges. And Craig will be going over tomorrow. Can you also say, see our work plan for how we're going to reach an 80% response rate. So you can just say it one sentence. Our work plan in later sections details how we're going to reach an 80% response rate. I also had another question come up. Is, you said don't copy and paste, but some of these sections are kind of for the needs assessment for each one of the performance measures. They're very similar. Can I, what can I do? Well, when we say don't copy and paste, we mean from externally, like from past, but to be consistent with your wording, it's okay within the same document. So once you have the wording, the terminology down, it's okay to copy from that and paste in another because that shows consistency throughout your document. So who used a, another type of outline for this section? <laughs> They're pointing fingers. Stephanie, are, are you okay with talking about how you set yours up? Yeah. Um, I did mine a little bit different. Um, just, um, uh, I did mine, basically, I gave a synopsis um, in the intro paragraph of that section of uh, our data and some of our main themes that we've highlighted um, so that following that I can talk about um, a couple of the projects which we're working on right now which go along with that needs assessment so I can come and tie it in. Um, and then I discussed the performance measure data 
um, in the 2011 performance report in reference um, the first letter which was sent to us. Um, and then following that section, I put it just a couple sentence um, blurb about um, what uh, our plan was going to be for reassessment that we consulted with in our and that would be followed. Yeah, and that, that's fine. You don't have to set it up the way we showed. That was just a basic idea. Just as long as you cover all the performance measures and demonstrate the need. What other questions do people have about this section? Carol? After performance measure number 80, under other activities, is that an appropriate place to put the um, the after disaster, peace disaster uh, response project? The, you mean the, do you mean the pediatric readiness? Readiness, yeah. The pediatric readiness actually um, is associated with performance measures 74 and 75. That is not considered an other activity. Other activity is anything non-performance measure related. So, so like if we were going to do an injury provision. Well, okay. And it could go in either place because it could be when you're saying you plan to reassess from 76 and 77 mm -hmm. that you plan on using the pediatric readiness survey which will cover those measures. Or uh, if you use 74, 75, you plan to use the pediatric readiness as a way to look at facility recognition. But you only have to state it under one. Your choice. Yeah, what if you could say both places. I mean, it can be used for both things. It could be a, an initial step to looking at it. What other questions do people have about the needs assessment? Reassessment period. 